So, how can we use limitation to achieve a richer life? And how can we make limitation our best friend? Well, before trying to start and answer these questions, we have to divide limitations into two categories. On one side, you have the limitations given to you by life. And on the other side, you have the limitations that you force into your life voluntarily. The limitations given to you by life, like losing your job, or even worse, ending up in a life-changing accident. These limitations we seem to manage quite well. But the forced limitation that you force into your lives seems to be so much harder than all the other choices. I will start to tell you a little story from real life. This friend of mine was a officer in the Salvation Army. He was raised by his mother and father, also officer in the Salvation Army. He told me this story. Growing up, at any day, randomly, he could receive this yellow letter in the mailbox, saying it's time to move on in the life moving to another place on Earth. And he described this letter almost like a relief, because he didn't have to take the choices. They just have to pack up their belongings, saying goodbye to their friends, jumping on a plane, and move to another place on Earth, helping out other people. He is still an officer in the Salvation Army but he doesn't receive this letter anymore because they are outdated. When I talked to him, I could sense that he would like to move. When I tried to force him to admit this, he started, like the rest of us, to put up all these barriers of why and not to do it. Like, it's the middle of the school season, they have lots of new friends, and it's a tremendous job packing up all their things. So, after trying to force him to admit that he wants uh, to, to move, he finally admits that he would like this yellow letter to arrive, making the choice easier. But remember, this letter is only a piece of paper, yellow though. You can take that choice yourself, for, force that limitation into your life. Let me share a story from my own life. Me and my wife, after having our first children, first boy, we were not able to make more children, not going into the details of why and how. But anyway, we ended up adopting two of the most adorable children on Earth. We uh, actually received this call from the adoption office. It was a quite strange birth, though, saying, hello, this is from the adoption office, waiting for two uh, years, actually, saying, uh, I hope it's okay if it's two, not one. As you see, this is only a picture of one, but uh, it's, uh, they are identical twins, so you have to imagine that the other one looks all the same. Well, this led us to a remarkable journey to Ethiopia. And we prepared our son for this travel, telling him about this, one of the poorest countries in the world, where it suffers some of the biggest humanitarian crises of all time. And what did we meet in Ethiopia? Yes, of course, the standard of living was terrible considered to our standard of living. But we met the most generous and the most smiling people I've ever seen. Seeming like the whole country had found this particular recipe of happiness. I remember the first night in Ethiopia. We were struggling around trying to find something to eat. We ended up being invited to someone's home, sharing an Easter dinner. I must admit I feel a little bit ashamed eating and sharing their food. It was served some uh, ribs with so little meat, it was, seems that all had been eaten. But I must admit, 
I have never met that genuine generosity in the Western world. So what will you learn about this trip? Well, coming back from Ethiopia, I felt, my, felt embarrassed, starting to get uh, irritated uh, of a small, of big, or big limitations in my own life. So I tried to change these limitations and always look at it in a positive way. And when I managed to do that, I also started to force the limitations into my own life voluntarily. So, even better, try to do this in your profession and in your work. I have founded and co-founded some 10 companies, and all these companies were started with a long list of self-forced limitations. In 2020, I decided to start a restaurant together with two other partners. And we have this vision of making one of the best restaurants in the world. And how do you do that? Well, we started with a long list of self-forced limitations. I will share some of these moments for you. We said that we should only use organic food. And not only organic food, but preferable biodynamical food. And for those of you that don't know what biodynamical food is, I would say it's a hardcore version of organic. And we did not only use it on the food, on the plate, we also decided to do it what we served in the glasses. So all the drinks was also organic and biodynamical. We also draw this circle of 10 miles radius around Oslo. And we wanted the food not to be traveling more than, than these 10 miles. But we didn't only set that limitations to the table and what the drinking. We also said in every single detail, so we tried to find organic cotton for the tablecloth. We ended up with a floor made of recycled um, uh, plastic bottles, and so on and so on. We started this restaurant in November. And you can imagine the season in Norway. Most of the country is already covered by snow. And remembering this list of limitations, you can imagine looking down on the table See what kind of food that matches these limitations. It was uh, one potato, one onion, and one Jerusalem artichoke. <laughs> and remembering then uh, the vision of making one of the best restaurants in the world, we tried to discuss to see if we should take away some of these limitations. Luckily, we didn't do that. We stick to all these limitations. And that was our road for success. Because, you know, the amount of limitations produce the same amount of creativity. So I think we end up, ended up using more hours than any other restaurants in the world trying to perfect this Jerusalem artichoke. And we use the same amount of hours to match and pairing food with the uh, drink with this Jerusalem artichoke. I also remember ordering this uh, Jerusalem artichoke from a farm just a few miles south of the restaurants, from a little island. We was calling the day before uh, and saying, we have 10 customers tomorrow. And the farmer would go out in the snow, putting a warming blanket on the soil for the next day to take it up, put it in a box, covered with cotton, bringing it to the restaurant, like it was a box of gold. And we treated it like gold. So, how does this story continue? Well, only after two months, we started to read sites like this, in a language we didn't understand. Hopefully saying something positive. And just a few weeks later, we got our first international customer jumping on a plane in Singapore and fly all the way back up to Norway to taste this Jerusalem artichoke. Take a coffee the day after and then fly the, all the way back to Singapore. Of course, you could say this is not actually a good uh, organic sustainability. <laughs> but anyway, 
that led us to an extremely journey. That led us to not one of possible three, but two star in the Michelin Guide only after 14 months. I would like to end this talk by giving us all a little homework. Go home. Well, not go home, it's not a... Go home and make and write your own obituary. And see if you are happy with what you read. It could sound something like this. He was a decent guy. He was an obedient worker. He was occasionally a part of his children's life. He fell asleep peacefully and quietly. If you're happy with what you read, don't take notice of anything I said. But if you want an obituary to be a little bit different, then you have to go home and try to force small or big limitations into life. I can't promise you the obituary you want, but I can't for sure promise you a richer journey. Thank you.